I'm John Bowden. Here's part one of our interviews with Mark Andes. This is Rock History Music. And I think both of those guys had to run into that situation. And I didn't want to be around when they did it. So I made an early exit, went back to L.A., from Colorado and um what were you feeling when you left when you left were you feeling was there doubt going well I mean the band was starting to decline a little bit at that point uh, it was 1980 when you left right correct yeah what was the yeah. feeling like how were you feeling when you left well that's an interesting complicated question because we had been touring with heart actually opening up the shows and and we kind of admired we we admired their organization and 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 their musicality and their uh musicianship and we thought god these guys are good and then ken kinnear made an offer to manage the band so we had this big meeting in his office and i didn't tell anybody anything but ken was a meeting to announce that we would like to assume the managerial capacity here and it happened and i said what a great decision by the way you guys <laughs> i'm out of here i am gone i cannot do this i think ken is a great manager didn't exactly i don't know how anybody else feels about it but i don't, I don't know how that worked out for them but i felt so relieved when you get at, when, when things start to go out of control there's a chaos and a stress thing that gets going, it's not pleasant. And I had a family, I had a young family. I had a, I had a, a young little, a baby boy, a 10 year old stepdaughter. This was not going well. And I made 500 bucks a week while Rick and Larry made hundreds of thousands in publishing. I never made more than 500 or, or Jock or David. I mean, it was very, very unfair and so I just had to walk away. Fans have no idea, you know? Fans have no idea when it comes to stuff like that. Sometimes. Well, I love to be transparent with this because they should know how hard it is to love music enough to put up with that kind of stuff <laughs> and still want to play music with the same guys. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, check, that is beyond neurosis, dude. <laughs> Did you keep in contact with Jock all these years? Yeah, kind of. Uh, of course, I got, I got distracted. I was the first original guy to leave and all that. But we did sort of stay in touch. And, and um, I was flattered that they kind of asked me to come back and see if I would like to try on some of the old songs. And I actually was surprised that it was as good a fit as it turns it out to, to, to be. <laughs> the fans love a reunion you know i was just talk i mean i know you were in heart obviously and i was just, i just talked to the the fisher brothers and of course you know how it is the fans who love ann and nancy oh dare they say that and i'm going kind of sounds plausible i mean i don't know and i and i'll take sides i wouldn't do that i'd love to talk to ann wilson someday but i won't throw out my integrity for something like that but there's always the camps right the camps like for instance, my best example of that is I love Nigel Olson's drumming of Elton John. But technically, Nigel Olson is never going to be my favorite drummer. It's Roger Pope or it's uh, 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 Simon Phillips. I like the fancy stuff. I like, uh, you know, right. I like drummers who fill the, the, the gap. And lot. That's too busy for some people. But they'll always right. choose. Everyone Neil likes Kurt. that couple. It's John Bonham. <laughs> right. Well, you know, that is a very good point. And, and, and I would have to say that to circle around to our topic, Michael Clark was the perfect drummer for Firefall. He, he, was, he would have not been the perfect drummer for Spirit or, or Heart or Can't Eat. <laughs> but man, he killed it when it came to the birds, the burritos, and Firefall, you know? When I talked to Rick, he was quite honest about we said you know he was sad about he says well you know you we lost the firefall drummer and, and of course i knew his history with the birds and and larry as well uh, touched on it and but they were very open about you know their excesses and, and both of them you know what both of them said you won't be surprised but they said well how can we not be it's out there it's just it's it's out there and we we were living like rock and roll stars when in rome yeah 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 and what do you what do you do 
in my case, I just realized that there's a, a line when, when you are partying and you're living the, the big life, the big rock star life, and then it, it starts to interfere with your ability to do your job, which is the music. And then it's like, this is, this, this is uh, not sustainable, <laughs> you know? The fact that you guys have nature's way, it's like full circle for you, man, on this new album. Yes, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that was my design. I mean, I, I, I wanted to uh, honor Randy and I'd been approached by many people to, oh, you know, let's do a version of, of nature's way. And I thought, well, I'll just wait for more a, appropriate time. And, and with the litigation with Taurus and all that stuff, I, I just felt like, uh, yeah, Firefall would be a good vehicle f for that. And then with Timothy and John McPhee and all of the Firefall guys deciding to kind of honor Randy in, 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 a, in a quiet kind of way, because what really upset me, actually, to be honest, John, was that there was never really a big send-off for Randy. I mean, we didn't ever really get it together to you know, do a number for that guy. And the lawsuit, you know, was an attempt to get credits and it didn't work out the way that we had hoped, you know. It, do you know what I'm saying? So this was my small gesture. And man, my buddies, my bros, Timothy B and John McPhee and, and the Firefall guys stepped up and, and my good friend Robert, McEntee, who his, was with me in uh, the uh, Dan Fogelberg band and some early stuff in the Navarro family band. It was meaningful. It meant something. And Timothy and, being there is kind of nice because he was on Just Remember I Love You, wasn't he, on the background vocals? And all of a sudden, that comes full circle. Oh, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Timothy's been around forever. I mean, he, Timothy was a fan of spirit. Before he was in Poco, he was coming to, to spirit shows and we would hang and, and do silly stuff back then. <laughs> Comment on our videos, share our videos on social media. It means so much to us, helps us grow. And remember, subscribe to our channel. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Mm -hmm.